What's up guys, it's Carson back from Toxic Gaming today with the week 6 PIC battle against the real Judy last year's seasons, not almost said last year's, but last year's champion and we are here with the LA Double Aids. I believe we were Judy's only loss in the regular season or maybe his one of two losses total last season. So we, we can do this, we've done it before, we've shown the shit, we know what we can do, but to run through his team real quick, see what he has. Number one, he has Mega Venusaur. Our mascot. My channel mascot. My favorite. He ain't, he ain't fucking us over with our own Mega Venusaur, hopefully. But he starts off with Mega Venusaur. He's got Slowbro, Halucha, and Chansey. And then Fortress, Haxorus, Nidoking, Ambipom, Gramble, Typhlosion, Swellow, Electivire, and finally Arm Armaldo. I always fuck up with that name. But he's got all those ones. He's got pretty heavy offensive, but he's got the real bulk and Venusaur, Slowbro, Chansey, Fortress. And then, like, he has stuff like Halucha, Haxorus, Nidoking, Ambipom, switching around. We know what Ambipom fucked us over with last season. And then things like Typhlosion and Swellow that can come in endgame and really tear up. But we decided, I decided to go with a little bit more of a heavily offensive approach to this. Um, we go with, starting off with TLC, the Mega Pinsir. We're bringing this specifically because of that Mega Venusaur. I have a feeling... I know Judy is smarter than to really bring the Mega Venusaur as we have Mega Pinsir and Victini to really deal with it, but I can see him doing it just to spite me. So I'm bringing the Mega Pinsir anyway with 252 in attack, 252 in uh, speed with Jolly Nature and 4 in special defense, quick attack, return, close combat, and swords dance. Basically, if we can force a switch out and swords dance up, we will, but we don't have to. Like, I don't want to rely on swords dance. But if we can, we will, and we'll then go for returns and quick attacks on things that we need to. And the close combat, I believe, is for the Armaldo and the Ambipom specifically, and then also the Chansey. That way, that Chansey can't come in, and if we had returns, he could eat it a little bit better, but we have something super effective to hit the Chansey. And after one close combat, honestly, if he doesn't have many more wall breakers and we're faster than everything else, and stuff, so, uh, I would say maybe over half HP, quick attack is going to do uh, very well for Mega Pinsir for us. It'll do very well, and I don't know where my mouse is. There it is. <laughs> but we're going to move on to the Brow Victini with the Assault Vest. We're going back to the Assault Vest Victini with V-Create, Psychic, U-Turn, and Bolt Strike. 24 in HP, 252 in attack, 8 in special attack, and 20, 224 in speed with a hasty nature. This Victini is basically built to punch holes as we need to, not really to outspeed anything, take a hit or two with the Assault Vest due to that lower speed. But then we also have Psychic instead of Zen Headbutt, and that reason is because Mega Venusaur could be is more likely going to be a special defensive wall or an offensive or a physically let me see more likely to be a physically defensive wall, not special defensive, a physical defensive wall, bold natured and stuff for Victini's V creates and Zen Headbutts than it would be for specially, or it's going to be an offensive. Uh, Venusaur and Psychic would actually do more damage to it. We could have run Size Shock instead, but it would, it would hit on the defensive side, which is exactly not the point. But we want the psychic, we want psychic for it. I believe it's a two-shotting Omega Venusaur with this set that is a physically defensive one, and I believe has a pretty decent high chance to one-shot a offensive one. I haven't looked at the calc specifically for that, but that's really why we have it. It also helps us with Nido King as well. Um, it helps us with Halucha if we really need to. We can bolt strike it as uh, bolt strike Halucha too, but it's not going to want to take anything from us from Victini. A little bit of HP in the Assault Vest, kind of give it a little bit pseudo-special bulk, see what happens. But next up we have Kevin the Sylveon with Citrus Berry, Pixelate, and Hyper Voice, Psyshock, Substitute, and Calm Mind with uh, 252 in HP, 252 Defense, and a Bold Nature, and 4 in Special Defense. Now the reasoning for the Sylveon the way it is, I originally wanted to go with a uh, more of an, a Special Attacking Sylveon or the Specially Defensive Tank Wish Passion Sylveon. And I was in a talk with a uh, like Raikwin and Shroom Raver and some other some other YouTubers just you know just in Skype call, and they brought up the idea of sub calm mind, and I thought they were, because if I can get a sub up on something say his slow bro I set this I set up on that slow bro and sub up as he maybe switches out or something like that fearing a Sylveon or tries to toxic me I can then calm mind up and fire off hyper voices Psy shock for the Mega Venusaur, the Citrus Berry is specifically there in case maybe Haxorus racks the Poison Jab which I will live. But say he goes for that, and I, I think he's going to switch out, and said he goes for the Poison Jab, I live it. Citrus Berry brings me back up to at least 25%, and then I can still get a Substitute off if I need to, guaranteeing me to live the next Poison Jab and killing it with a Hyper Voice. 
just just that little bit in case I I over predict a switch and I get fucked over. It's a little bit of a safety cushion for Sylveon. I don't think he really has anything. Maybe bar a gyro ball from a, a lower like minimum speed fortress. A uh, maybe choice specs uh, sludge wave from Nidoking King or choice banded poison jab from Nidoking. King. He doesn't really have much else to really deal with Sylveon. It's physically defensive Sylveon to really take it out in one shot. And that's really the reason for Citrus Berry. And it allows me to get the sub up. If I get a sub and calm mind up, Sylveon's going to be a great mid-game. It can come in and just kind of threaten out with a few Hyper Voices and chip away here and there too as well. But that's where we're going to have Kevin Rock this this week. We also have then have Sand Slash, Sonic, Xe with Leftovers. And Sand Veil, Earthquake, Rapid Spin, Knock Off, and Stealth Rock with 252 in, uh, in HP, 4 in Attack. 252 in bold nature and defense. Again, another physically defensive mod, but Sand Slash actually is our physical wall. Like, that's what Sand Slash is going to be here for, to set up rocks if we can, because he has Fortress to get rid of them. I do not believe Halucha gets Defog, I'm like 90% certain, and I know Swellow does, but you really don't want to run on a Swellow. So really his only option to get rid of rocks is Fortress, which is really scared out by Victini. So I, if I can get those rapid spin, get those rocks up, and then spin away whatever the Fortress wants to set up. He wants to set up Toxic Spikes, he wants to set up regular Spikes, he wants to set up Stealth Rocks. I can spin it away with, with Sand Slash, and really not worry about a Gyro Ball coming. He can't Volt Switch out on me. He can Explosion, but it's not going to kill me. So, that's why I have Sand Slash here. Knocking off also, or Knock Off also just also helps, like, with a Chansey. If he tries to bring that into Toxic Sand Slash, I can knock off the Eevee Light and allow Pinsir to tear through it a lot easier, allow Victini to tear through it easier. Just, it's an overall utility, nice defensive wall, it's what I want Sand Slash to do. Next we have, I would say, our special attacking wall breaker with Thunderous Theory, and again, we're going more offensive this week, with Extra Belt, Volt Absorb, Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, Hidden Power Ice, and Nasty Plot, 252 Special Attack, 4 Special Defense, 252 Timid Nature Speed, get the max speed we can, and basically if we can, this is kind of our lead at the moment. Because what I believe his lead is honestly going to be is the Fortress or the Ambipom. One of those two. And because we don't have any um, Rocky Helmet users, I thought about putting Rocky Helmet on, on uh, Sand Slash, but Leftovers seem better for passive recovery. Uh, really, we can put Thunderous in there and take a knockoff. Not great, but I might hard switch out into, uh, into Sand Slash at that point. If he leads with the Fortress, on the other hand, he's going to set up Rocks probably first turn. He can't Volt Switch on me, he could Gyro Ball, but it's not going to do that much being a Steel-type move, even though the speed difference is there. I can Nasty Plot, and then Thunderbolt, two Thunderbolts will kill it, or th really threaten to seem like it will threaten the first attack, and he may not want to he may not want to sack it off that early, switch out in something like Needle King, and I can Hidden Power Ice if it's there, switch out into something like maybe a Venusaur, and I can, if, or a Venusaur, and before Mega Evolves, I can, I can Hidden Power Ice it, get a ton of damage off. Basically just get as much chip damage as possible, and then if I need to keep him around, maybe for fodder later, I can Volt Switch out if I can get the momentum that we need, if I need it. Really Thunderous isn't probably going to Volt Switch a whole lot unless I'm really forced to, but I'm there in the beginning to really break through some holes really early on, get, put that pressure on really early. And finally our last mod, again, we're going offensive, we're going at it, we're bringing T-Rekt. Choice Scarf Tarantrum with Rockhead, Head Smash, Earthquake, Iron Head, and Outrage. 252 attack, forward special defense, and 252 jolly for speed. I thought about running adamant because we have the scarf, but again, Tyrantrum doesn't outspeed a whole lot of mods. Like I believe, it, I believe with the choice scarf, it boosts it to like 106 speed, so it's still not going to outspeed things like, um, and that's not going to outspeed like Halucha, Swellow, Typhlosion, Ambipom. It's still not going to outspeed those things. But with his only fairy type being Gramble, and with Ronsui me having. Like Lucario and Tentacruel, I don't see him bringing Gramble, even though it could be Intimidate user. So that's why I went with Outrage instead of something like Dragon Claw, but I would be locked into it anyway. It made more sense to go for Outrage. I have Iron Head just in case that Gramble comes, but really I'm going to be head smashing things. Head smashing and Earthquaking, that's what Tyrantrum's here to do. He probably will either be the late game sweeper and clean up the game, or, or that's if we can get the mons that are faster than him gone. Or he's going to be the middle game to really hit things hard before he goes down and then Mega Pinsir and Big Teeny come in and clean up house. Because I've run this with Mega Pinsir, Mega Pinsir with this team a few times and Mega Pinsir, if it gets gets in free, I'm able to tear shit through. And that's what I'm ready to do with Judy. He's a very good battler. Check him out below. All his links and stuff are going to be down there. He is the champion from the last season, so we got it. We knocked him off once. We got to knock him off again. 
but be ready for the battle on Thursday. So this, I know this is, this is a little late, but he had some travel plans and we had to do the battle a little later. And this is going to go up a little late on Tuesday. But again, thank you guys for coming out. I'm Carson, the Toxic Gaming. And as always, USA Toxic. We'll see you guys.